Hey out there, I'm Jennifer Morrison, and I am an artist who specializes in botanical colored pencil drawing. This is part three in a series of four videos that I have created as an introduction into colored pencils. In videos one and two, I introduced you to some of the supplies that I like to use in my colored pencil drawings and demonstrated a few of my favorite techniques. In this video, I am going to show you the process that I used to draw this dahlia using Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Pencils on Strathmore Museum Mount Board. Let's get started. I am a photorealistic artist, which means I use photos as a reference image. Here is the reference image that I'm using for my dahlia drawing. This one came from a royalty-free reference site called Pixabay. I edited it and added a black background to suit my project. The second step in my process is to create a light outline of the reference on my drawing paper. Here is a tip. You can trace your reference image directly from your TV or computer screen, and doing this ensures that you have a perfect outline and sets you up for success in your drawing. Here's an image of the main supplies I will be using. I will be drawing on Strathmore Museum Mount with Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Pencils. I will be blending the pencil using a low odor paint thinner from Daylor Rowney, and I will be using a selection of brushes from Princeton to blend the paint thinner. Three of the main colors that I used in this drawing were the light orange, cream, and vermilion. And I'll be mentioning more pencils as I work through the drawing, but you can find a complete list in the description section for this video. Now I'm ready to start drawing. Starting out here, you can see me working around the edge of this first petal using the Pompeian red pencil. I found that it was easiest to work on these petals one by one, and I often think of my drawings as a little bit of a puzzle. Just filling in one section at a time just keeps you focused and keeps the entire drawing from being too overwhelming. So just work on one petal at a time and move through your drawing like that, and that should help. Next, you can see me using the cream pencil to block in the areas that are quite a bit brighter around the tips. There was a lot of focus on blending between the more yellow colors and the orangey colors. There you can see me using the white pencil, and in this case I'm using a technique called indenting, where I'm pushing really hard with that pencil to create some indentions so that when I come back over that area with my brighter colors, the pencil won't stick there, and it's gonna leave me with a, a nice highlighted line down the center of that petal. One of the most important things as you're blocking in these petals in these first layers is you want to make sure you have some of those directional lines in there to really give shape to the petals. And I usually do that with either a darker color or by indenting the paper with a, a lighter color or both, which in this case I did both. And now I'm just filling in around there. So you saw I kind of got in the darker areas and the brightest, lightest areas first, and now coming in with my more orangey and red colors, I'm using really light layers. As I move through this petal, one of the things that you're gonna notice is that it is layer upon layer upon layer, it's just a lot of layering and by layering it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to use different colors in this case I did use quite a few different colors in here but you can have several layers of just one color that's one of the things that I didn't really understand as a beginner it doesn't have to be 10 layers of 10 different colors you could have 10 layers with just one color or one pencil 
but especially with the first petal, it just takes a minute to get acclimated and for me to start mixing some of these colors together and decide which ones are really working well for my drawing. You can create a palette, but sometimes once you get in and start working on the drawing, you're going to have certain colors that just seem to be working better for some reason. And I just, again, keep working my way through. Once I have enough pigment on this paper and I feel happy with the way everything's looking, I'm going to blend this all out with solvent and I'm going to speed through to that point now. All right, this is the solvent that I'm using. It's Daler Roundy Odorless Paint Thinner and I'm using this Princeton brush, an angular brush to apply. Just dip the paintbrush into the solvent and then I'm gonna dab it off on an old cloth before I go in and start blending out the pencil. And what the solvent does is it just basically breaks down the binders in the colored pencil pigment and turns this into almost a paint. And I like to think of it as activating the color. And the most important thing is it's getting rid of any of the graininess in the pencil and creating a really nice base for me to go back over and put more layers of pencil and add any details. Here you can see me using an electric eraser. I like to use an electric eraser to pull up bits of color to add texture and depth to my drawings. That is a technique I talked about in video two, so you can go back and watch that if you're interested. And after that, I'm just going to continue layering until I am happy with the way my petal looks. So in these final layers, I'm adjusting the values. So I'm gonna make sure I have those shadows really nice and dark. And I was using the wine colored polycolor especially in the shadows, and then also some of the Pompeian and the Burnt Carmine were also helping with those darker shadows. And then I'm also gonna be brightening up the lighter areas using the yellows and the white. This is also the time that I would start to add in more details. Anytime you aren't happy with the way your drawing is looking, just make sure you give it enough time and keep layering and here you can see this petal almost complete and I am going to move on to the rest of the drawing. And for the sake of time, I will be speeding through the rest of the drawing. One of the important things to know about working with colored pencils is that it really is a very slow medium to work with. This drawing took me about 12 hours total for a 10 by 10 inch drawing and many of my drawings have taken up to 40 hours for a larger, more detailed piece. So that is to say, be prepared with an audiobook or a podcast and just try to enjoy the process. In fact, I would expect to spend close to an hour on each of the larger petals. So I know it's really hard to see exactly what I'm doing as this is moving so fast, but keep in mind that this really is a rinse and repeat process. Once you know how to draw that first petal, I really drew all of these basically the same way. I just started off by laying in my shadow and highlight areas, then working in my mid-tone colors, blending everything with solvent, and then coming back and adding my final layers. And as I'm finishing up this drawing, the last big piece of advice that I wanna give you if you are a beginner is to keep going. I have drawn for thousands of hours to get to this point, but you can expect to make progress really quickly. So if this is something that you enjoy doing, just have fun and enjoy the process without worrying too much about the outcome. It won't be long before you will step back and have something that you're really proud of. 
And here is my finished drawing. In the next video for this series, I am going to be adding a black background. So be sure to tune in for that video. And if you have any questions about this video or colored pencils in general, I am happy to answer those in the comments. Thanks for watching.